Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our news conference as we will announce the names of the Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame Class of 2015. I'm Al Craig. This is our sixth annual event. It's gone along very well. The Hall of Fame kicked off in 2010. And uh, come September the 17th, next door at Carmen's Banquet Center, we will get six more entries in our gala evening. Our membership will grow at that time to 48, including 44 individuals and four teams. It's really been a going concern, the uh, Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame for all of us involved and a very popular event, as many of you know. To begin this morning, please welcome Brian Lewis, the chairperson of the Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame. Well, thanks very much, Al, and, uh, and thank you all for coming today. Uh, this is the, as I mentioned, this is the sixth time that uh, I've been able to uh, speak at this particular event uh, to announce uh, other important things. And I don't take that responsibility lightly, uh, and, uh, and I don't take the privilege lightly either. It's a wonderful thing to be a part of. I represent a great group of volunteers sitting on our board, many of whom are here today. I also represent the selection committee, who remains anonymous each year. Uh, the selection committee are made up of individuals uh, who uh, are professionals in the community, uh, are involved in the community, are aware of our history, and they rotate each year. So there's new faces, new blood, and new stories that come out of the process. The stories of the people here today, the, the, the stories of past inductees, that's why our volunteer group is involved. We are inspired and we look forward to galas such as, uh, events such as this the galas in September. I'll just do a little bit of care, uh, a little bit of caretaking, and then I'll pass uh, the speaking up back to the professional Al, who are also privileged to have uh, uh, speak and volunteer with our committee. We have our second annual golf tournament upcoming on Wednesday, September 9th. It's at the historic Bedell Course at Shadok, which has a a uh, certain uh, cachet, a certain connection today uh, that you'll find out about if you don't already know. We have our induction dinner in which we celebrate the individuals that we're announcing today and the team that we're announcing today, which is uh, on Thursday, September 17th at Carmen's, which is just across the parking lot. And at this time, I'd like to thank Carmen's and the Sea Hotel by Carmen's uh, for all of their support over the years since our inception six years ago. And I'd also like to say that we have our education program that Cecilia Carter-Smith heads up, and it's something that is very unique in the country and actually in North America. It's a partnership with the Hamilton Spectator and both the Hamilton Public and Separate School Boards. What's interesting about the program is it's tied directly into curriculum. In the past two years, over 150 grade six classes throughout the greater Hamilton area have participated in our education program, learning about the stories of the athletes, the teams, the builders, and those that have inspired us and hopefully will inspire generations to come. We've taken on that responsibility to help educate and inspire those that are coming along after us. So with that, thank you again for coming. I'll turn it back over to Al for the significant names and announcements, and thank you again for very, very much for coming. Thank you. Don't go too far there, Brian. Uh, the Hamilton Bulldogs uh, have a presentation to be made, and uh, they are represented by Aaron Gogish-Billy, Senior Director of uh, Public Relations. Justin Dickey, Manager of Communications, is here, as is Matt Holmes, the play-by-play -play announcer for the uh, Bulldogs in American Hockey League, and this will, uh, all these guys will still be around for the juniors that are coming in, as uh, I'm sure all sports fans know. So if I could uh, call up uh, Aaron Gogish-Billy right now for the presentation. We've got some uh, significant uh, memorabilia here to present uh, to the Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, what do we have first? We've got the, uh, the jersey, a game-worn jersey of Christian Thomas, who scored the last goal in American Hockey League Hamilton Bulldogs history. And the second last goal, unfortunately that's all we got that day, <laughs> the second last goal, a stick autographed by T.J. Hensick of the Hamilton Bulldogs. 
we look forward to the Bulldogs also uh, maybe contributing from the very first junior Bulldogs game that will be coming up in the, uh, in the fall. Absolutely, definitely. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks. Good heads up there. We're also very pleased to have uh, Hall of Famers in our midst today that have been elected uh, over our first five years. And I just uh, would like when I announce the name to stand up and uh, be recognized, Rick Jocelyn from the wonderful world of martial arts. <laughs> and around with Rick, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a pretty tough guy and he's an official as well out where now. Bobby Krause, Hamilton Tiger Cats in the back there. Also from the Tiger Cats, but not in his uh, presidential position, but uh, as a member of the Hall of Fame Hamilton Junior Hurricanes, Glenn Gibson. Yeah. And a member of our committee, and what a valuable one she is with, uh, with all of her knowledge of sports in Hamilton, but a Hall of Famer as well, Cecilia Carter-Smith. We also, uh, when we mention the Tiger Cats, I'd like to recognize Mike McCarthy, who's with us here today, former, well, he's had every job with the Hamlin Tiger Cats, and now he's with the Montreal Alouettes, so that's all you're going to get from me today. Behind us, he's a lion. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I rest my point. <laughs> Uh, update your website, will you? <laughs> All right, it's that time, ladies and gentlemen, now that we will introduce to you the, uh, the great new Hall of Famers. They, they're just elected now. That's the, uh, the key way to go, and then we will induct them on September 17th, officially. First of all, the 1962 Hamilton Red Wings in the team category. The 1962 Hamilton Red Wings won the Memorial Cup emblematic of the Canadian Junior Hockey Championship. The Red Wings, coached by Eddie Bush and managed by Jimmy Skinner, finished second overall in the Ontario Hockey Association, and they lost only one game in the OHA playoffs, sweeping St. Catharines TPs and Niagara Falls Flyers, and then topping Toronto St. Michael's Majors four games to one. The Red Wings then swept the Quebec Citadels in the Eastern Canada Championship. Hamilton met the Edmonton Oil Kings, a very famous uh, Western club in the <laughs> Memorial Cup, they took the opening game. Now, this is really interesting. They won 5-2 to two at the Hamilton Forum. The best of seven series then moved to the Guelph Memorial Gardens, where Hamilton won game 2-4-2. Two, two. They lost game 3-5-3, three, three, and then they blanked the Oil Kings 3-0 to grab a 3-1 to one series lead. The teams then moved to the Kitchener Memorial Auditorium, where the Wings won 7-4 to capture the Memorial Cup four games to one. The Hamilton team included 10 players who went on to the NHL or WHA careers, including the hero of the 1972 Summit Series with the Soviets, Paul Henderson, Ron Harris, Earl Heskela, Wayne Rivers, Bob Wall, Roger Lafreniere, Jimmy Peters, Brian Campbell, the late Pitt Martin, and Lowell McDonald. Other notables, and I just talked to this guy the other day, and he's all jacked up, just, uh, he's really excited. Howie Menard, who uh, still holds the record for most points in a single American Hockey League playoff game with seven. And Johnny Gofton, you remember Johnny Gofton? If you don't remember him from the hockey, he, was, he played a hilarious role in the iconic hockey movie, Slapshot. The 1962 Hamilton Red Wings elected in the team category to the Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame class of 2015. I don't believe we have any representative from the uh, Red Wings here today, but uh, after talking to Howie Menard, they'll be at the dinner, I can assure you that. Our next elected uh, Hall of Famer, Patricia Cole, athlete, builder. Pat Cole has dedicated the majority of her life to sport as an athlete, coach, mentor, and volunteer. She has won multiple Canadian championships as an athlete and a coach. In 1959, she was named the Canadian Pan American Games team, which competed in Chicago. Cole coached the Hamilton Olympic Club for a decade and guided five athletes, including one world record holder, to national teams. Her athletes have competed at the Pan Am 
Commonwealth and Pan Pacific Games. She coached internationally for Canada at the 1963 Pan Am Games in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and the 1969 Pan Pacific Games in Tokyo, Japan. Cole started the women's outdoor track program at McMaster University. The program began with two athletes, but grew and captured six women's provincial intercollegiate titles. Indoor track, too, was introduced to Mac by Cole. In addition to track, she has also coached a number of OUA football players who ended up competing in the Canadian Football League. Add hockey to Cole's coaching expertise. For two years, she served McMaster as an assistant coach, helping to lead the MAC women to intercollegiate finals. Cole's commitment to MAC includes introducing the Eagle Award, which recognizes McMaster's top female athlete. And get this, she introduced Maud, McMaster's uh, mascot. Other community uh, sport endeavors include setting up a track and field program for Hamilton's recreation department, campaigning to keep junior hockey in Hamilton uh, in 1954-55 with the then Hamilton Tiger Cubs, serving as a director for the 91st Highlanders Association, that's indoor track meet, volunteering at the Hamilton Spectator indoor games, and assisting at the 1976 Pre-Olympic Basketball Tournament. In 1990, McMaster recognized Cole's contribution to the university by naming her the first woman to the Max Sports Hall of Fame. And in 2000, she was named to the Hamilton Gallery of Distinction. Cole's contribution to our community is indeed worthy of induction into the Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame. Please congratulate Pat Cole. <laughs> Rocky DiPietro, athlete. Following a brilliant 14-year career as a slot back and a wide receiver, Rocky DiPietro of the Hamilton Tiger Cats is truly among the greats in the history of the Canadian Football League. The native of Sault Ste. Marie and former University of Ottawa GG, he became the CFL's all-time pass reception leader in 1989. His career stats, all with the Tiger Cats, total 706 receptions for 9,762 yards and 45 touchdowns. By the time DiPietro retired, and that was in 1991, he had starred in four Grey Cup games, winning in 1986. He held the Tiger Cats team records for most career pass receptions and reception yards. In 1982, 84, and 86, he surpassed 1,000 yards in receptions. DiPietro was named to the Canadian Football Hall of Fame in 1997 and uh, had many other awards and honors bestowed upon him. He captured the Shanley Award as the most outstanding Canadian player twice in 1982 and 1989. He was an All-Canadian slot back in 1986 and 89, an All-Eastern pick in 81, 82, 86, and 89. Is a three-time winner of the Lou Heyman Trophy as most outstanding player in the East Division in 1982, 86, and 89. Di Pietro also named the Tiger Cats Wall of Fame in 1994. After pro football, he moved on to become a high school learning strategy special education teacher and coach of multiple championship winning teams at Lakeshore Catholic High School in Port Colbert. He elected to the Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame in the class of 2015, Rocky DiPietro. <laughs> Norm Marshall, builder. Norm Marshall and Larry O'Brien were commentators on the first telecast of a Grey Cup football game, November the 29th, 1952, on CBLT in Toronto. Marshall would go on to be the voice of the Tiger Cats for 26 years, but that was not the start or finish to his illustrious broadcasting career. He started in CKTV in St. Catharines, first singing for the station, <laughs> then announcing. In 1940, Marshall was broadcasting for 900 CHML radio in Hamilton, and when CHCH TV started up in 1954, he was among its first personalities. He was a news and sports anchor with Channel 11 and sports announcer for CHML. He won the Fred Scambatti Media Award in 1988 for his broadcast work in university sports. Many will remember Marshall's play-by-play -play of the OHA Junior A Hamilton Tiger Cubs and then the Red Wings from the Hamilton Forum, affectionately nicknamed, as we all know, the Barton Street Farm. 
during Marshall's 55 years of broadcasting, he did it all, including reconstructed football and baseball. Now, younger fans probably have not heard of reconstructed games. We call them recreations as well. Stations who were not reporting from the site, usually road games, would get statistics sent to them on the wire, and then they would have to take the info and make up a play-by-play -play to fit the stats. Marshall, who was a master of this, would tell hilarious stories of having the wire break down for 30 minutes, and he'd have to add lib and fill that time <laughs> until the game started back up as far as he was concerned. He was always involved in civic events, either as a participant, fundraiser, or master of ceremony. He was synonymous with sport in Hamilton. The elected of the Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame in 2015, Norm Marshall. And Norm's lovely wife, Helen, is with us today. Helen, please stand up. And... Congratulations. Claude Padamore, athlete. Claude Padamore's accomplishments are legendary. He won more provincial, national, and international golf titles than any other Canadian, and he couldn't see any of it. Padamore, who at age 21 was almost killed and totally lost his sight in a dynamite explosion in 1948, took up golf three years later at the insistence of a friend. Now, by the following year, he was the best blind golf player in the country and continued a career as one of North America's premier blind players for more than 20 years. Padamore was the international and U.S. blind golfers champion in 1950, or make that 1963, and was a 14-time winner of the Ontario Blind Golfers Championship and the Canadian title 12 times, all of these triumphs between the years 1952 and 1972. In 1963, he won the Grand Slam, taking the Canadian, U.S., and International Blind Golfers Championship. Padamore was the first Canadian golfer to break 100, and in 1963, he carded an 86 in competition, a record which stood until 1989. He had a personal best score of 78 on his home course, Shadokes Badeau. Padamore was the first to tell you that he could not have done it alone, as he had numerous coaches over the years. Blind golfers require coaches to line the player up, help with club selection, provide distances, and try to read the greens for the players. In 1996, he was inducted into the Canadian Golf Hall of Fame in Oakville, and in 2015, we are very proud to announce Claude Padamore has been elected posthumously to the Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame. Claude had numerous uh, coaches over the years, but uh, by far the gentleman that uh, was with him the longest time, 23 years, is with us today. I'd like to introduce Robin Ridgewell. <laughs> also, a fellow did a lot of teaching for Claude. Rod Goods is with us here today. <laughs> and representing the Canadian Golf Hall of Fame and Museum, Megan Gardner. Joe Zuger, athlete builder. Joe Zuger played an outstanding 10 seasons with the Hamilton Tiger Cats from 1962 to 1971. The former Arizona State Bulldogs quarterback completed 814 of 1,618 pass attempts for 12,676 yards and 76 touchdowns with the Cats. In his first game as the team's starting pivot, Zuger threw an incredible eight touchdown passes eight touchdown passes in a 67-21 romp over Saskatchewan. It remains a Canadian Football League record to this day, not for rookies, for anyone. He amassed a club record of 572 yards in that game. Zuger also excelled as a punter and had a league-leading career average of 45.5 yards per punt. Three times he averaged more than 48 yards a punt over a full season and had a few sale as far as 80 plus yards, including one of 85 yards in 1968. As well as throwing and kicking the football, as was the case back in those days, he also had to play defensive back for the black and gold. Zuger appeared in five Grey Cup games, winning three of them in 1963, 1965, and 1967. He earned MVP honors with the Cats in the 67 centennial year victory over Saskatchewan, 
He had another good year, uh, calling signals in 1968. But the following two seasons, he was limited to 11 and 9 games respectively because of injuries. However, in his uh, final year as a player in 1971, he returned to play in all 14 games. Zucker would later serve in the Tiger Cats front office and was general manager from 1981 to 92. And under his leadership, the Cats won the Grey Cup in 1986. Elected at the Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame Class of 2015, Joe Zuger. Joe's with us. <laughs> and we have another hand for all of our new people from coming into this very prestigious hall. And that pretty well brings to a close the festivities here today. Uh, obviously, the, the people that are involved are representing where the athletes themselves will be available for interviews. Don't forget to, to eat. You gotta eat. Get your veggies. That's what I always say. And thank you for coming out again.